must fix as new customs arrangements for those sending goods back and forwards to the EU kick in. There are signs that cracks are emerging, with exporters reporting delays, diversions and disruption at the borders. Katie Prescott's got more on that and the rest of the business news. Morning, Katie. Good morning, Martha. Also in this morning's business, we'll look at how the confirmation of Joe Biden as US president confirms a new direction for the US economy. And what can we expect from Marks and Spencer when they publish their financial results later? But first, it's eight days since the end of the Brexit transition agreement with the European Union and new border rules were introduced. It seems problems are beginning to emerge with the new arrangements. The delivery company DPD has temporarily stopped sending parcels to the EU, citing the increased burden of customs paperwork. Scottish seafood exporters say that they're seeing queues, border refusals and confusion, which is a lethal concoction when you're exporting fresh fish. Well, Shane Brennan is chief executive of the Cold Chain Federation, which represents frozen and chilled transport or storage. Good morning to you. Good morning. What are you hearing from your members? How big a problem is this? It's certainly a, a growing problem and a real sense of unease um, trying to take an overview of, of what's going on. You know, trade levels are still very, very low. You know, it's growing from 10% on the 1st of January up to not quite, not yet 50% of the traffic flows we would normally expect. And even at that level, we're seeing high levels of confusion, delays. We're seeing businesses being not turned back, but being told that if they come back in the same way with the same sort of preparedness next time, they will be turned away. And so the feeling is that we're building to quite a significant uh, potential disruption uh, to our ability to get product moving. Uh, what, what exactly is the issue? Is it about people not completing paperwork properly? Well, I think the crucial thing here is that this is a very complicated set of issues. It's not about one thing, it's about 12 different things. So it's not about one person, it's not about the haulier or the trader, it's about the border officials, the ferry uh, companies, the vets, and the IT systems and all these different moving parts are all being applied for the relatively the first time over this week at a low level of trade. And the indications are that it's not all working seamlessly. And that is what worries us about the, 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 the likely problems going forward. But do you get a sense that going forward this will bed in and people get will, will get used to the new arrangements? In the end, yes, but the question is, how long will that take? You know, and it's not going to be a matter of days. You know, there's been a lot, there's been a theory throughout that, you know, that this traders will only do this once, they'll only make a mistake once, and the next time they'll be ready. But that's a really bit naive about the number of different things that have to get, that get right. And also, the more detail you get, the more it's about interpretation. So the authorities on the border might think that you've done it wrong, whereas you thought you had got it right. And that sort of confusion is something that has to take it takes time to bed in it could be months before we actually get proper clarity that people feel confident about exactly how to trade across the border well the financial times is reporting this morning that there's going to be tougher french customs controls from monday is that something that you're hearing yeah yeah that message is coming through i mean they've been the, the attempt has been very constructive up to now you know it's been slow and people are learning as they go these officials are learning this are doing this for the first time on, on the french border as well but they are saying that their intention is to toughen up and to not allow things through from next week and, if, and basically, we're in their hands. This is the crucial thing. You know, traders need the officials on the border to, they, they hold the control. So we need them to be pragmatic and help us to get this stuff moving through, or else we are going to start seeing quite significant slowdowns and potential uh, interruptions in supply chains. Now, there are also reports in the papers today that people just aren't sending things into Europe. Um, and, and as I said at the start, DPD, the parcel company, it is one of those businesses. Is that something that, that your members are stopping doing? Are they kind of sitting on their hands for a while, do you think? So they are waiting and seeing. That has always been the plan. It's been for two or three months now. This is intention for this period was to slow things down, not move stuff if they had to, see how it goes. That can only last for another week or so. As we get into the middle of January, there's going to be a lot of, of trade that needs to happen. And at that point, we're going to see, so that escalating volume and these hardening up at borders is going to come together in potentially a very, very negative way. So we're really, the plea is to the authorities and on the French border and others to, to continue being pragmatic, continue to work with the traders and help them to move stuff. You know, it is about getting to compliance, but the way to get there is to work with us and get stuff moving and not hold stuff up and send stuff back because that will create the, the significant crisis that could, could build from here. Thank you very much, Shane Brennan from the Cold Chain Federation. Well, the confirmation of Joe